Good morning, I'm Steve Forbes and this is 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This is where you get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock with news. The northern summer season is now starting and markets might be getting a little thinner. First on Wall Street, equities are lower today after warnings that the trade war is undermining railroad traffic volumes. Also, US housing start data has come in weaker than expected, even if they are 6% higher than the same month a year ago but new residential building permits were almost 7% lower than the year ago level, so the outlook looks a little grim. And mortgage applications also slipped last week while US mortgage rates were a little higher. All of this is consistent with the latest US Fed Beige Book report that says the economy is now just running at a modest level, which is a downgrade from their modest to moderate wording used in the past. In Canada, the CPI inflation rate slipped from 2.4% in May to 2% in June, but this was, as expected, on the back of lower petrol prices. But Canadian industrial output growth came in below expectations with a gain of 1.6%. In China, steelmakers reported that their first half profits dropped sharply due to surging iron ore prices, sliding steel prices and tighter production restrictions on factories. Vacancy rates for office space in China's top cities is surging as demand is unable to keep up with much higher supply due to the economic downturn, US-China trade tensions and the deleveraging campaign in the financial sector. The vacancy rate for grade A office space in Beijing climbed to more than 11% in the first half of the year, the highest level in eight years according to Colliers, and they say it might rise to 16% by the end of 2019. China's leaders are off to a summer retreat to ponder their next moves on their economy in the trade war. The IMF is now pointing out that China is no longer a net lender to the world and with its trade and investment levels basically in balance, the only distortion is that the US can't seem to stop sourcing from China. The IMF's core point is that this improvement has reduced global financial risk. While in the South China Sea, tensions are rising again with the Philippines asking for the US to help counter Chinese incursions into its waters. While in Australia, Fitch has downgraded the ratings outlook for both ANZ and Westpac, shifting its stable outlook on their AA- rating to negative. The US 10-year yield is now just under 2.06% and 6 basis points lower than this time yesterday. Their 2 to 10 year curve is holding on to its steeper shape at 23 basis points and a negative 1 to 5 year curve is at 12 basis points. Gold has jumped $14 overnight to $1,421 an ounce. US oil prices are falling today on trade and growth fares and they are now down more than a dollar to 56.50 a barrel and the Brent benchmark is down a similar amount at 63.50 a barrel. The Kiwi dollar is stronger yet again, now up 67.4 US cents. On the cross rates we're also up now just under 96 Australian cents and against the euro we are now at 60.1 euro cents. That puts the TWI5 up at just on 72.3. I'm Steve Forbes and that was 98.9 brought to you by interest.co.nz.